Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to Sup FM, Streetwear's Sup FM. Unsung Podcast, Sneakers, Ultimate time. Podcast. Uh, there's, uh, there's a million different ways you, you can slice <laughs> this onion, baby. Um, The Sexy Unique Podcast. <laughs> that's, that's somebody's podcast. Don't... The Stand Up Paddle Boarding Podcast. The Stand Up paddle, paddle Boarding Podcast, also called Sup FM. Anyway, welcome to Sup FM. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Across from me, I have virtually Luke Trevisi. What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? God is good. All the time, <laughs> God is good. <laughs> We're going to get into that in a second. Um, in the background, we have Matt Meany, our producer. Lawrence is not here this week. He had a little thing where he, uh, there was a little blip where he had to take care of that, but he's okay. Everything's good. Um, and <laughs> this is what we call a French episode. It's a and... French guy episode. For those who don't know, the French guy's coming back out. <laughs> we don't have Lawrence here to sort of uh, keep us on track or regulate us. Basically, this is just going to be a crazy one because we also have a, a very unique guest, um, a sexy, unique guest. <laughs> no, stop. Come on. Give her a proper <laughs> intro. I'm not so, going to. We do have a guest who came on today. Her name's Farrell Robbins. Yes. She, um, I met. Tell her about us. Yeah. So in. um. In an effort, so we rebranded the podcast. We got away from the Supreme branding. Um, we're not going to have just comedians on as guests anymore. I want to have, like, real professionals that you guys can actually look to for actual information instead of us just being dumb and saying stupid shit about what's going on. In Why won't they put the blue on the sneaker that I want? I won't. I can't hit on sneakers at all. <laughs> That's, listen, that was me last week. <laughs> I know. Not this week. Not um, this. No, so she runs her own footwear company. Um, she's a super boss. Um, and she gave us a lot of insight into some things that maybe you guys haven't considered before or haven't thought about necessarily. We're talking about pricing. We're mm -hmm. talking about gender. We're talking about Gen Z. We're talking mm -hmm. about a bunch of stuff. Um, so look forward to that later in the episode. Talking about but, sustainability market. Yes. And but then we get into resale stuff. Which resale. Right now, um, take a screenshot of uh, whatever device you're listening to this on, some sort of image to post on social media. Tag us, a sub podcast, NYC. Um, you know, follow me, Luke, Lawrence, Meany, um, at not that Cheney, at Trevisus, at LZD325, at 3 Meany. Join our Discord. Our mm -hmm. Discord is the hub for this podcast and all the things that encompass it. Um, so do that. When and do we release this podcast for people? When do they, when do they, officially Mondays, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, go. yeah, we, I mean, we like upload Sunday night and then we go, hey guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, offici officially, we say it's Monday, but, yeah. you know, it's like a window of like Sunday night to Monday morning. So yeah, just yeah. be in a, on a lookout for that. Yeah. But here we are. All right. Look, um, I am befuddled with the amount of money that you've been hiding Dog, from us. I've had a fucking week, <laughs> baby. You, I was it four hits you got? You got four W's? I got five W's this week. Five. That's so many W's. That's yeah. one W a day for the whole week. So I got the football grays. The dunk uh -huh. eyes. I got those in the six and a half women, so I can't I can't wear them, which sucks. You know, you can wear them. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got the, the football grays. I got two pairs of the Jordan fours. The yeah. Top haze ones. Wait, uh, just give one of those to me for retail. I can't. One of them was a 10. I gave that one to my friend already. And the other one's 11. I can't. Right. I can't sell you that one. OK, Um, I would have. But the reason I got the, the the fours was because I had no I, no care for them at first. And I my friend was like, I, I want a pair for me. So I put in an extra butter raffle, signed up. I won them. He he was allowed to just pick them up. It was great. Everybody feel, felt good. Then Sneakers app had that ready-made blazer. Hit missed on those. And I was like, I'm checking out with something today. And I got the fours. So I have two pairs of fours. I also got the Ash Blue 350s that came out, which, you know, our guest Farrell, has some opinions on, which is fine. <laughs> yep. Which is fine. I got those, which is number four. And then I also got a deal on Chicago SBs. Which, which what was the deal? It was so the box was damaged and the guy <laughs> had worn them and uh f like one time and I was like, all right, knock a hundred dollars off the price. So I only paid like four fifty for them. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not great either. It is not great. You're, you're right. I spent a thousand dollars on shoes this week. This is why you were trying to get those bots. Yeah. <laughs> to offset the cost of whatever yeah. this was. It would, you know what? It does look pretty bad. Like the week after. <laughs> the week well, after the bot shit is now you hitting on all the sneakers. <laughs> I hit four times and then I bought for resale on one. 
I can't even fucking. I told you about this, dude. I can't even fucking hit on lemonade. Yeah, you know, that's how it goes. So, <laughs> so uh, this is going to be a weird sort of uh, thing, but I really like seltzer. I've gotten into seltzer. <laughs> I don't know how to hard, like hard seltzer or regular normal people seltzer? Both. Both. I like seltzer. You know, it started from doing stand up. A lot of these open mics that we used yeah. to go to was you had to buy a drink in order to do the mic. And the and seltzer the cheap- was the cheapest item on the menu. Cheap. Yeah. And like over time, I sort of just like started to like seltzer. And then like White Claw came out and then all of a sudden I'm fucking drinking seltzer sober getting drunk off it i'm everything i'm doing is seltzer based and i found this one brand i really like it's called spindrift it uses like actual f- the, of the fruit flavor in there and shit and like i love spindrift i'm a spindrift guy so they email me because i signed up for the newsletter that's how much of a guy i am i'm like yo i'll get emails from these guys <laughs> yes <laughs> so they're like yo we just made sparkling lemonade and i'm like oh shit dog that sounds fire and they're like dope 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 this is when you got to pick them up though yeah, they're like, all right, like, because you're on the newsletter, you can have a free batch, but you have to like sign, you have to like be on the website and like, you know, if they tell me it's like be on the website at noon on whatever day that was, and you know, I was like office ping Lawrence ready, yeah, <laughs> at noon. But Were you at is, a life? I was at a life. I was at work. Hilarious. <laughs> so I'm like, literally, like the guys are asking me to get files. I'm like, yo, I have to buy the seltzer. They're like, what's wrong? I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, leave me alone. So literally at noon, I'm office ping Lawrence, like at the thing, ready you to do, go. You do realize you sound like a character from like a show about people who design sneakers, right? Like the I don't, eccentric <laughs> guy who only drinks seltzer. Like, you know, you, that's how you sound right now. You sound like a character in an anime where the, that character is powered by seltzer. Yeah, I am the Frankie of this podcast. Yeah, Frankie. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Everyone Actually, knows what every, I'm talking about. Everybody One in piece the Discord Frankie. knows. Yeah, the Discord does know. The Discord for sure knows. Lawrence would be here going like, why anime again? Why? Anime again. And uh, he will also be like, Luke, why are you smoking weed on the podcast? <laughs> I can do whatever <laughs> I want. Yeah, Lawrence, shut up, bitch. <laughs> uh, I hope he's doing all right. <laughs> Um, no, so like I'm there, I'm I'm office ping Lawrence, ready to do this. And right. then, you know, they're like, they're like, yo, we need this for a meeting. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I go and I get the file, I send them the Dropbox links or whatever, and then I immediately go back to my computer where I, it's ten it's noon, tw- it's twelve, like seven now. It's like twelve oh seven or something. Oh yeah, you're done. I get an email from Spindrift saying you've fucking missed. <laughs> I can't hit on fucking seltzer. Yeah. It it <laughs> I like that you read all of your emails in like classic Bostonian accents. You're like, you fucked up, kid. What happened? <laughs> what happened? We told you to come here at 12. You fucked up. Yeah, no, it's fine. So you're you get five pairs of sneakers. I can't even get seltzer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just some of us are born to win and the others aren't. <laughs> As he says, halting the Supreme Mike. That's it. You know, you know, some of us are blessed and others aren't. You know, maybe it's... maybe next time God will grace you. I don't know. I don't know, man, but that is just so fucking. That's great. No, it's not. It's great. Listen, it's a it's a wonderful story we got out of it, and isn't that more valuable than five pairs of sneakers? No, literally not. We have sales sheets and a website that tracks all this stuff. No, literally, it's not worth it. Yeah. Okay. You're right. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> That's, you're not lying here. What else you got going on, bud? Uh, what else do I have going on? Uh, this week is Supreme Dunk Drop. I know we're not really going to go into news, but to our listeners out there, good luck this week. Yeah. Anything? Um. No, I think, I don't know. I think that's it. I just was All so right. upset about the fucking spin drift. Listen. All right. Let's, here's a little advice from the French guy. Everybody who knows I'm a French guy. I uh, I grew up in Jersey. That's how I have this accent, but I'm from the <laughs> Bordeaux region of France. <laughs> My favorite brand is Aimly on Door. It's my favorite brand. Yep, yep. Unless you're French, then it's pronounced Emily on Door. Anyway, <laughs> you guys, you guys, good luck this week. Sometimes <laughs> you win some, sometimes you lose some. It's the French guy uh, signing out. Okay, I, th- I think that was weird. I don't know where that came this from. This is why we need Lawrence. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just saying, like, that was just, like, a weird thing. I don't know where the French guy came from. But anyway. Oh, oh got you, got you. Got you me. know, he just came in here, left, and, oh, we're on video. <laughs> okay. All right.
listen, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy this episode with uh, Farrell Robbins. Once again, you can follow us uh, on uh, Instagram, Sup Podcast NYC. You can follow me at Trevisas, Chris at Not That Cheney, yep, Lawrence yep. at LZD325, and uh, Matt Meany at 3 Meany. Uh, also, listen to um, Lawrence's new podcast, I Hate This Job. Um, yes. He's got a couple episodes out now. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely give him a listen. Uh, and, you know, any any comic that's on this show, guests, anywhere, just also follow them, too. This is about supporting each other. You know what I mean? It's A, a follow is free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you can follow Far- Farrell Robbins at Farrell Robbins. Yep. R-O-B-B-I-N-S, I think. It's going to be a link in the bio. bio. Yep. yep. Peace. All right, all good. So we wanted to break the ice a little bit. And my thought was like, we had this discussion last week about two different pairs of sneakers. Uh, there's like the Nike Flyies, which is like that uh, technology with the, um, that you're able to like hands-free put on your shoes. And then we it's have like- So cool, by the way. Right. And yeah. then the 450s, which, you know, came out of the Yeezy camp and it's like this kind of experimental sneaker. And we wanted to give you like, we wanted to, you know, not really compare the two, but like we did like a would you rather like you know flyies or 450s so you know? so flyies yes and it's an easy one for me and that is because um all about inclusivity and i actually mm-hmm. the world is about inclusivity right now and the fact that target uh, so, sorry i can't believe i just said target the fact that nike do you want me to start that over again no 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 you're fine because actually that's a good we'll come back to target because target's one of the things we want to talk to you about too right. but it's also very into inclusivity right now but um the fact that nike is actually honing in on the values of gen z and their consumer is 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 kind of kick ass and gen z is we've had this conversation before like you like these guys are cool like they're pretty awesome and they actually have um, priorities and social um, social opinions on what is important and what is not. And when you start thinking about what's happening in the world in and of itself as it relates to product, um, we're having really cool conversations about sustainability and we're having conversations about fluidity as it relates to gender. And we're also having conversations about the adaptive market and so regardless of physical limitations we are focusing on a consumer group that has been overlooked and or marginalized so i am taking this gen x thoughtful i mean it's it's really what my company is all about it's all about inclusion and regardless of you know age size gender uh color um financial means and and physical limitations so the fact that nike has proactively addressed a consumer group that has difficulty bending over and tying a shoelace and getting their foot in is huge and it's cool. And the fact that somebody in a wheelchair could actually put on this shoe and feel as cool as their peer, which historically was not an option. Yeah. Um, yeah. Generates a tremendous amount of loyalty for me. Um, just as an appreciator of, of the, the incentives or the motivations or the world that Nike is trying to create, which is, you know, with Nike zero and sustainability and, and space hippie and all of these initiatives really speak to um, the bulk of their consumers. Which is, you touched on basically everything we want to talk about. Um, everybody, this is our guest. Um, welcome to sub podcast part, whatever part we squeeze this in. Um, <laughs> so that was a great intro to basically everything we're about to talk about with you. Um, just so like I said, so I don't fumble. Can you tell us who you are and what you do and who you represent? Sure. Um, my name is Farrell Morse and I own a shoe company called Farrell Robin. And we are all about the empowerment of women and sort of creating a world or we envision a world where, um, people, regardless of age, physical limitations, size, gender, um, you know, association, color, Mm -hmm. um, are empowered. And really what we empower them with is footwear. Um, That's really, so what we do is is envision a world that's greater than who we are uh, using the word empowerment. And how we do it is with shoes. And when you guys think about it, this definitely speaks to your 
market and the sneaker market because so much of consumers in the hype beast world, so to speak, are buying it as a, as a means to feel as a status symbol or a way to feel um, the same, but different from the peers that they're right. associating yep. with. And it's, and it's really, when you think about what footwear or fashion in and of itself is, it's, it's a statement. You're making a statement to the world. It's a, it's an inclusive, but yet very exclusive uh, way of being in a community, but alone at the same time. Well, you know, it's, it's actually really fascinating because it is, um, it is in and of itself really um, contrary or um, the antithesis of what it's supposed to be. So you think about um, this Gen Z consumer and how important things like inclusivity and uh, fluidity are to them and uh, using terms like inclusivity in and of itself, but really um, a true hype beast is somewhat exclusive. And that is actually what has made um, these items what they are today, the inability uh, to consume them. They're not made for a lot of people. They're they right. were focused mm -hmm. in terms of drops and creating a greater um, demand than there was a supply and, and the implications of that. So it's, it's really counterintuitive in a way. It's, yeah. It, yes. And I, we're and aware. I an <laughs> yeah, we're very aware. It's like, I want to sit at the cool kids table at lunch, but um, I want to be different or I want to be perceived yeah. individual mm -hmm. and they, they bounce against each other, which is what makes it so fascinating. Which is actually the complete opposite market that you actually work in, correct? Yeah. Well, my company is all about inclusivity and that doesn't mean um, there aren't brands that we work with because we design and produce footwear for, for brands uh, as well as large retailers, including some of the mass retailers that we spoke about in the private label division 90 percent i guess 95 percent of what we do is in the private label world um and that is really on um sort of the least common denominator in terms of of mass uh appreciation and accessibility so it is the exact opposite so just so um because i always tried to advocate that there's more sneakers than a nike check in three stripes um and you're a perfect example of this other whole entire world that people like us don't necessarily understand exists. Yep. So we care about shoes that we can't get and idolize people who can get them and right. wear them. Right. So it's sort of like this, this counterculture of like see do, but also I want to be individual, but just kind of just what we just said. Um, but what would you categorize your footwear as in the space? Uh, so what we really do is, and it depends, well, let's, let's talk uh, different markets, different, um, organizations that I work with. Because again, when we work with a brand versus a mass market is very different. Yep. Uh, I think what we do, which is which is very different from what most uh, other trade companies, which is what I'm referred to as does, is that we are hyper-focused on the consumer. So who consumes the goods at a target and why? Who is consuming product um, online in, in uh, distribution channels like Amazon? Who is going into a brick and mortar store, a store and buying this particular branded item? Who is going into um, a branded retailer that we work with everybody from Aldo to Anthropology, Three People, Zappos, uh, Amazon, private label, Target, private label. So we really have a very diverse um, customer base, if you mm -hmm. talk in terms of retailers, and I always say our customer is the consumer. And we hyper focus on really understanding the value of that consumer. And the reality is um, a woman who shops at Walmart or Target or uh, actually is motivated or has different values than a consumer who's buying from brick and mortar and wants a brand. The brand is what speaks to them versus price point or design or, and there's a difference between a target and a Walmart. And then you start bringing direct to consumer into this conversation. And it's, it's a market that becomes somewhat segmented uh, in terms of who's using what for why and how they're, they're consuming on these sites or these outlets or brick and mortar or, or, or distribution channels mm -hmm. and really understanding what is important to them. What, what do they value? Um, some people value price, some people value design, some people value 
um, accessibility in terms of the inclusive market and being able to put your foot into a shoe that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Um, if you have physical limitations, uh, we work with retailers that focus on the plus size market and, and understanding what those consumers live, breathe and die for. Because at the end of the day, you want somebody to walk into your store or walk into your um, or, or buy an item and just sort of feel like the prettiest girl at the prom and empowered and cool and kick ass because of it. Yeah. And so just to sort of add on top of this, I was trying to explain the guys before we hit record here is that you had a very interesting point when me and I, you and I spoke separately about the transgender community and footwear yeah. too. So um, to sort of expound on that, because you were mentioning like, you know, you're talking about the consumer caring about the consumer, the women's market is about to expand due to the overall arching, like more acceptance that we have as a community a world, right. For the transgenders. And you are saying that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that that market is going to expand just because of the amount of footwear options they're going to want. Well, I, I think I think the only way that business is going to expand, because let's face it, like we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic. We've had two um, economic depressions in the last decade or so. Um, you know, people are being much more thoughtful about how they consume and what they consume. And the reality is, I think focusing on market pieces that have been uh, ignored or consumer groups that have been marginalized um, is tremendous white space opportunity for anybody. So the convert we when when I was actually asked to launch a line and I did it in conjunction with Zappos, which happens to be a company that is very like minded to Farrell Robin. Like we are about empowerment and inclusivity and non judgment and this gender neutral marketplace. Um, spoke really um, profoundly to me because I, you know, when you start doing research, the the trans community has the highest rate of suicide. They have been, you know, marginalized throughout history and my need to empower them um, was really powerful. And Zappos saying, we love the idea of, of offering product to a consumer that has not had this opportunity and we also believe in empowerment. So it was a really nice collaboration, but the reality is there's not a retail in, retailer in the world or there shouldn't be uh, as far as I'm concerned that doesn't look at the next generation of consumers and think gender fluidity because frankly, if you ask somebody in the Gen Z community, um, you know, what pronoun they want to associate themselves with. And most are like, I could give a shit about a pronoun. Like yeah. I don't, judge people by pronouns. I don't care if it's a he, she, they, you know, it doesn't matter. Say, yeah, all the whatever. And it, and, it, and, it, and it doesn't matter. So acknowledging that and realizing that this world is, is, is bigger than, than the box that we live in is actually really cool. And frankly, it's about time. So there is all of this gender neutral product um, that's starting to hit the marketplace with intention, um, authentic or not, um, really, because it's a because it's a financial opportunity or True. not. Yeah. The reality is, um, it's going to make the world a better place. So I have a tendency not to judge the motivation behind it as critically as a Gen Z consumer would, who's ah. all about mm. authenticity. Yeah, that's true. The authenticity story uh, always, I mean, especially for us too, you know what I mean? Like we've been going back and forth on like the customs versus the bootlegs versus like what is like authentic art versus what is, it comes down to intent. Um, totally. Actually, I, speaking of bootlegs, we, we had this conversation about bootlegs last time when we spoke initially and I was talking about how um, there's an appreciation for, the, for a bootleg when, it, when, when it's about the goof. Right, so the, the, yeah, the right. consumer who's buying a fake, or like it's it's not supposed to look, it's not supposed to be a knockoff, and the closer it is to a knockoff, the more resentment there is to it. But there's misspellings, and like I was saying, I bought a pair of uh, knockoff Supreme slides in Asia the last time I was there for my kid, <laughs> um, and and the the letters were backwards. You know, it wasn't it, they mirrored each other, and he was like, oh man, like it's not even good. But I think he appreciated the goof of it. Like he actually got off on the goof of it. Whereas if I brought him home a pair of Yeezys, which I actually shouldn't acknowledge, but I, I did. And he was like, <laughs> house, cause I can't tell the difference. And, and that offends him. 
Like, right. Yeah. It's like that uncanny valley of sneakers. Well, it's, yes. And they're they're all over Asia. I mean, they're like in every area that you go in Asia, whether it's in Hong Kong or mainland China, or like you can find a back street that that literally has um, like a knockoff road right. and you can get, you know, a version of, of a Yeezy or an Off-White or a Supreme or like they are very tapped into that marketplace and um and it really is the only way to do that and do it with cred is to do it for the goof uh so the actually the more real it looks the more offensive it is yeah this uh, it's very interesting that. yeah yeah I, mean I was i was reading this really cool um story about um heron preston mm -hmm. yep so um, he was actually in Asia in a side street and saw a knockoff of, of his product that was spelled incorrectly. And in order to own the narrative, because because let's face it, replicas are a big business. Um, yeah. But brands in sort of trying to engage and gain control over how and when, you know, things are being knocked off. He actually went in and created a concept called um, authorized fakes, where he bought a shitload of his product where his name was actually spelled incorrectly, brought it back and actually created um, authorized fakes where he signed off on it and then distributed it as the knockoff of his product. Like, so and how cool is that? Like That's that is crazy. probably the cool. I didn't even I never heard this story. So you're selling that you're telling me that he resold. <laughs> yes. He re, he he's a reseller of his own fake product. He is a reseller of his own fake product that was actually misspelled. Like it's not even like a good like it was a <laughs> fake with his name misspelled and I've actually gone to to mainland China and found t-shirts with my like it's my name with the spider uh, ski jacket logo like it's just <laughs> yes you know it's so random <laughs> Lucas you hype. Hate like, and I'm like, it, I'm brand like I'm this tiny little like what we do is so minimal in terms of uh, of our own brand that it was it, it I actually have the shirts because they just make me so happy just <laughs> it. But, yeah that would be pretty cool right but he went and saw these knockoffs and they're spelled incorrectly so they're clearly a knockoff and brought like bought a bunch brought them back and resold them you know sort of with permission, but at the lower pricing, like he didn't, he didn't increase the price to be like a real item. He just capitalized on the goof of what is going on. And, you know, it's like designers need to control the narrative of what, right. of what this is. And when you think about how much business this generates, like how much, like it, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating and it's really cool. Yeah. So what, what I was going to lead into asking you about having any knockoff issues. So you kind of had. Yeah. You know, we we had one knockoff issue, which I actually think is is was not valid or justified, but whatever. Big company um, within the streetwear market, actually, shockingly enough, because most of what we do is is designer and, you know, it becomes big corporation versus little. Right privately owned yeah. female run company and how big you want to take it legally is, you know, that's, that's the challenge. Um, I, I actually don't think it was very cool, but at the same time, like I get it, people are trying to protect their brands and the definition of, of what is recognizable is very different. We ended up just settling, like fighting it for me wasn't worth the dollar amount. And we right. truly, right. I truly um, believe wholeheartedly that it wasn't, a knockoff. It was it was a design in a particular market, but listen, shit happens. We're protective. Yeah. yeah. Listen, we work hard. People spend a tremendous amount of money in R and D and and need to protect their companies. I get it. Like it's no mm -hmm. real world, but you know, shit happens. Yeah, that's that is cool that you got to see your own stuff in in on like on a trip though, randomly. That's that's probably so interesting. It's actually really cool. It's like when I walk down the street and I see see people in our in our shoes, I'm always like. Yeah, I was gonna say because there is sort of like this sensation of seeing somebody in the wild with your stuff. I mean. Yeah, the and there's and there's there's something very cool about the anonymity that I get 
to own during it. So it's 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 the exact opposite of of a designer brand. So a Virgil or like a name associated with the product, because so little of what we do actually has my name on it. Right. That mm -hmm. that ninety five percent of the people that I see consuming my product have no idea that I'm behind it or that my company is behind it. And I actually get to um, interact in, in an anonymous way, which is, which is really beneficial. Oh, you're like oh. the Daft Punk of footwear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, in a way, like I used to, when we, we, we had a brand for a long time and we wholesale the brand. And frankly, I'm not a fan of the business model and I'm not a fan of historical brick and mortar business models. I think it's, it's, it was set up for planned obsolescence for a really long time and it mitigated the value of curation and, and thinking about your consumer uh, just because the math behind retail is so complicated. You're saying wholesale in general, you have an issue. Yeah. With. So selling yeah. to a, to a major department store, so to speak, is yeah. not, it's not a system of business that I actually, um, have much appreciation for it. It's, right. It's, it also like ruins margins completely. Well, it, 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 um, it's got a whole plethora of complications. Yeah, right? that's you know, true. About the expenses behind wholesaling a brand and, and really small creative companies like mine who just don't have the same cash flow as these larger brands. And then you work in department stores that, you know, all of a sudden you're guaranteeing margins, but you can't control the sale prices they put out. It, it reminds me a little uh -huh. bit of like those bad teachers that get tenure. But yeah, if the buyer yeah. sucks, I'm paying for them to be shitty anyway. So what, what like where's where's your skin in the game? That's a great um, example. Yeah. I'm a firm believer that that um that you only succeed when every um member of the team has some skin that is like skin in the game. Right. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a true partnership. Yeah, and it's it's the way we you know it's the way the whole world should be operating. Like you have friends, like sometimes you eat the bear, sometimes the bear eats you. Like sometimes you're listening, sometimes they're listening. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's any relationship should be um, a, a true partnership. So when I do business with people who, um, who are not really good partners, I'm like, I'm out, man, I'm too old for this shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. I don't have to kiss anybody's ass anymore, which is pretty cool. I mean, I kissed, <laughs> A lot of people's asses for a really long time but right you earned it yeah of course yeah listen i you know there's so, that learning process but um just because uh you know we, the the margin talk was there um i kind of wanted to pick your brain about what you feel about the reselling um uh i guess landscape is now where you know people are buying dunks the dunks are made for like what let's say $15 right and nike sells them for now like an inflated 120 and now they're being resold to kids like your son for like $400. Um, so, so here's how I feel about the resale market. Um, I'm a huge fan, personally. Um, again, Gen X, different motivations than, than most of the consumers that shop in that world. And that is um, the sustainability aspect of it. Yeah. Like, you know, just less product in a landfill when you get to, to um, move it up the ladder or move it around the ladder and it just gets extended use. Um, I'm a huge fan of entrepreneurial thinking. So to see kids engage um, and become entrepreneurs at such a young age, I think is really powerful in a society that doesn't, or in a country. Um, I'm not a big fan of the US education system in and of itself either, or our value system. And I think we undervalue outside the box creative thinking that lends itself to entrepreneurial success. So yep. seeing these kids like kids become, you know, year round, 24 hour entrepreneurs that are buying and selling and, and uh, bartering product is, I actually think a highlight of this generation um, that they're not like mom said, I have to go to school for four years and get the best grades that I can and then try to get in the best college that I can and then try to get a job in finance or shit that I don't care about. Um, that I just don't believe that's a successful model for any human life. So to see them being creative uh, is cool. In terms of, of, of pricing of shoes, you know, it's so easy for customers to stand back and say, including myself, um, like, I don't get the value. Like, how much does the shoe really cost? Like, and then all of a sudden it goes to, you know, like, like compliance, broken labor in third world countries where, you know, 
yeah. you know, and it costs yeah. X amount of dollars without really understanding business math. Like that's easy. One is Nike and, and any other major brand and or retailer in this world is so strict and rigid when it comes to compliance uh, because one um, one breakage, like one kid who wants to say hi to mom in a factory could literally shut down the entire factory because of the implications of, of the American consumer. Um, and it's costly to ensure compliance. Then you have, you know, materials, components, et cetera. But think about how much companies like a Nike invest in R and D. So uh, much money, so much money. And you know, they've got to pay for it. So yeah. that's going into the price of your shoes. And frankly, they deserve it. Hold like, on. For the listeners that don't know what R and D is, that's research and development. Yep. Right. Research and development. Okay. Just making sure. So so R and D is research and development. And the company <laughs> actually the companies that actually have the highest cost as it relates to research and development is within the athletic industry. Um, the rest of us, um, much less so. We are way behind the athletic industry in terms of technology in terms of material development and research and in terms of um i mean think about the ai that is available to your sneaker companies now we can have that whole conversation right later. there's yeah, auto racing shoes now yeah, you know like you want to be like these companies need to be in innovative the consumer is demanding that they be innovative and the result of that is you're going to have to pay for some of this innovation Right. Because yeah, it's yep. costly and, and it takes some great minds to do it. And that is why when you look at the, the um, sneaker athletic market and you talk about flying it, I mean, that is a sustainable material. Like, yeah. like Nike is putting out shoes that 80 to 90% of the upper material alone is, is sustainable and made from, you know, water bottles and, and organic cottons. And that is costly. But the research into the development of, of, of being able to take skim a lake in Mississippi, uh, get the algae off, create, you know, 1800 gallons of clean water, you know, send it over to Asia, have them, you know, mix it up, cut, chop, splice, melt, dice, and then it becomes, you know, thread. Right. Yeah. The yeah. algae, even, um, yay did, uh, that, that, uh, croc looking runner. That's all yeah. supposed to be like part of algae too, you know? Yeah. We, yeah. we use algae in our footwear footwear as well. And it's, it's costly and, and it's great. I think the, you know, again, we're doing something greater than ourselves. We're, you know, some companies take hit margins, some companies don't, some are like my customers willing to pay more, some are not uh, yep. different consumer bases, but to figure out this technology, like all birds mm -hmm. in it's chemistry, it's, it's, it's cool and it's for the world good and it's, and it's innovative and it's creative and it's tapping into brain cells that most people don't have and or use. And that's part of what the consumer is paying for. So, so to say, you know, it costs $12 and they charge 120, it's a little misleading. That's, that's not the reality. Well, yeah, that's why I wanted you to break it down like that, like how you did, because that's the way we think of the stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I mean, think about the cost of running a business. Think about your human resources. Think about yep. your research and development. Think about the technology that you're investing in. Then think about the fact that we, uh, most people buy these shoes, um, you know, anywhere from 90 to 120 days before they ever hit a retail store who then pays you 90 to 100 days later. Like it requires a tremendous amount of, of, of cash flow and cash is costly. Running a business and, and having the, the, the finance to run the business is expensive. So, so that like it costs $12, it costs 120 is not real. There's, right. you know, right. there's design costs, there's staff costs, there's development costs, there's, you know, sample making costs, there's, um, a sales force, there is trade shows and, and channels that we use to sell this product to retail stores. It's a certain percentage of resale stores that never pay you. Um, it is, you know, getting the shoes uh, onto a boat, that boat goes on the water, and then just think about the hitting costs, like the insurance for the boat and right. what happens if it sinks. And then it gets to the to, to the U.S. and you're paying duty and customs on it to the U.S. Yep. because the sneaker market or the footwear market in and of itself is one of the highest taxed um, consumer products for some odd reason. It's a struggle that we have. And then you have to, so you're paying the U.S. government and then you have to pay a trucker, a warehouse to like, 
take it from the boat and put it into a warehouse and then it leaves the warehouse and it has to, to uh, you know, go to a distribution channel around the country and get to the retailers and you can like there's a, a zillion costs that a consumer can't even, wouldn't and, even refer to them. And then even now it's like, I love, so some of the situations I've been in was like, oh, that product had like some weird spelling error. Oh no, we need to redo the whole thing. All right, well now we have to fly it in because the boat is going to be too slow and the flying cost. And now during COVID, there's no flying really. Like that product type of stuff is gone. What's fascinating is, is, is there are all of these new, issues that we're dealing with and it's it really will change our industry um one is when you think about the athletic market market in and of itself where is it produced where is yeah. it designed developed sampled produced in all of these asian countries which are really dependent upon mainland china even if not for production for components and materials because that's sort of where it's built right and something like this happens and and every company in in the world goes Oh shit! Like I am hyper invested into one area, and if something goes wrong, it's you know it's the domino effect. It all, it's all going to crash and burn, and and all of a sudden, you know, retailers and brands are are trying to diversify their country of origin or country of production production mix, uh, because they don't want to be so heavily invested in one area. And you know, for the last X amount of years, China has been you know, the location. So now to try to diversify, it's actually quite complicated. Um, but that is on, you right. know, if it's not on every company I know, I mean, it's certainly on mine, strategic priority to diversify production, whether it's um, just so you're not um, invested in, you know, 90% of everything is in one location. Um, it's because we're starting to think about end-to-end -end digital capabilities. We're starting to think about speed to market and flexibility. So doing production in a country like Mexico has huge advantages in terms of sustainability, in terms of just their um, near shore location. Yep. The USA, like the USA becoming a much larger uh, producer of footwear. And, you know, these are countries that just don't have these capabilities yet. And you're gonna, I think you're gonna start to see a diversification of, of where, where consumers are bringing in product from. Definitely. It's really do it. cool. Like what we do is yeah. really cool. Like it is, I, I, what I love about what I do is, is I, you know, I've been doing it for 20 something years and I am like, I love it and passionate about it. Like I, I wake up every day psyched about the work that I do. And there really is not a week since I started my company that I'm like, shit, didn't see that coming. Or, oh my God, we could do that better. Or why didn't we do this before? Like, and it is, keeps you really engaged and committed. It's, it's cool. But running a business is complicated. And Nike, think about Nike's marketing dollars in and of itself. Like how much of that margin goes just into just after going to the campus alone, I was like, oh, this is just another world. It's another world. And here's what I love about Nike. Uh, here's actually what I really love about Nike. And when you think about, um, and this may be too business focused for, for you guys, but when you think about companies um, that are really cool, like a Supreme or like a Nike, um, and you could pick them, they're leaving a legacy. Like Phil yeah. Knight went in, yeah. he created Nike because of his passion for, for, for running. He was a runner and he wanted to create the best running sneaker in the world. It was all about this passion um, that he had uh, within the runner's world. And, and when you think about, you know, creating the waffle outsole and that right. innovation taking place in his coaches you know, garage with a waffle maker. And, and um, it was about passion for the product. And to this day, Nike, regardless of what they do, uh, it is, you, you can never say that it is not a company that doesn't um, sort of bow down to the God of, of end use athleticism. It is a sports company. They will never say they're anything else, even though they may be being consumed differently for status or or whatever it is, it is all about making the best product for the athlete. Um, 
and, and creating a higher good. And I think those are the companies that leave, leave legacies. I also going back to the, uh, you know, a lot of the focus on at least today with the athleisure stuff, the material, the R and D being put into that. I think that's kind of why it became such a trendy sort of thing in the past. Like, I don't want to say like six years, you know, like because people put all that money and effort into the, the clothing that you only wear at the gym to sweat in. People are like, no, I want to wear this outside. You yeah. know, I gotta like, I gotta like show people I, I can wear this neon shit <laughs> outside. You know what I mean? Well, I, I, you know, I think there are, there are a couple of um, contributing factors to that. One is, um, I think for a really long time, the market, which is made up mainly of men or company, the CEO, the C-suites of most of these companies, um, certainly in the footwear industry, there are very, very few, if any, footwear companies that are owned by women. I don't know another one of my size or what I do that is owned by a woman. Um, right. Mm -hmm. And and what creates all of these opportunities for us is this underestimating the complexity of a human life. Like we are many people think like, think about it in the course of a day. All right. So I wear my athleisure to go to the gym and then I change my clothes to go to the office. And then I want to go out on a date and I want to look different. Like if we're using our clothes to communicate who we are, then there's so much opportunity in different places. But at the end of the day, we are running out of time. We are running out of, um, you know, sort of free time and, and we don't give a shit. Like, I'm like, shit, man, like I have to bend down and lace up my shoes. What a pain in the ass. Like if I could have a side zip. Cause man, or the fly ease, like, right? Yeah, like yeah. I'm seven minutes late to every, like I have yet to make a virtual call without being, they, they laugh at me in my company six to nine minutes late. <laughs> like I can chair from eight in the morning to seven o'clock at night. The feral and, grace period. And yeah, yeah like I, I honestly, like I use my AirPods and I hit mute and that's how I go to the bathroom because I'm like, I'm listening, but I don't have that, that luxury. So um, with the casualization of the world and with the growth of the sneaker and athletic market and it, you know, it became a trend and now we're like, God, these feel so much better than pumps. And with the casualization of the work environment, and now with what COVID has done, like I get to do whatever I want with whatever I want. And, and, and if I work my ass off in a gym and I look like I look hot as fuck, excuse me, I curse a lot. You know, like go for it. You're allowed. Yeah. Curse away. Let them fly. All right. I'm like, who are you to tell me that I can't like strip my shit in the neon pair of tights out in the real world? Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and yeah, Chris, that? why are you telling me not to wear my neon pants? <laughs> Yeah, man, like you know, oh, you don't get this shit. Like, yeah, his ass looks flat, Flarell. He will, he refuses to believe that he has a flat ass in in tights. No, I don't. They look supple. Listen, baby, you do you. Yeah, <laughs> you do you. Oh, uh, actually, you know what? This might be a good time because you've been crushing. Everything yeah. you've said has been amazing. Let's give you a break and uh, let's play this game we have about the resale market that we've been doing with our guests. Yes. So basically what we do is we bring up a couple of images of shoes. We want like initial thoughts on them, what you think of them. And then we want you to guess uh, the resale price. You are allowed to ask for the retail if you'd like. Um, it's not really going to help. <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask you random questions, but. And yeah, I, please. I was like, please. I actually got my kid before and I was like, dude, can you just be home for this part of this? <laughs> gonna, like crash and burn, you know publicly but whatever i'm no, sure the viewers will the viewers are gonna love you regardless it doesn't matter you win nothing from this i will let you know <laughs> just res just our respect yeah, yeah i was just gonna say it's like i i lost nothing falling on my face in the street the other day when I played, <laughs> but it just felt personal <laughs> so the first one you mentioned um kind of the move to like a more unisex uh kind of sizing for shoes uh, the first shoe that I brought up here is going to be the Nike Dunk Low, the Coasts. These are originally branded for women, North but Carolina, they're right. Yes, they they're uh, they're supposed to be UCLA, I believe, because of the yellow hits. Oh, um, right. But even yeah. then, these are supposed to be women's shoes, and of course, men were going crazy for them too. And I think that also kind of brings up that kind of similar thing where the sneaker market itself is like when when you were talking about that, we my first instincts were like what. What do you mean they're not unisex? It's already like unisex, but that's because I'm thinking in the world of sneakers where everything is a little bit more, you know, 
the hype has out uh done the the like the women part of the sneaker you know what i mean like yeah. we don't care because the hype is usually yeah, well, guys would let's, be let's like i'm not wearing it. women's shit well here's the reality in the sneaker market women are buying boy shoes yeah right if they can't get their size in men's and men are like oh, like really what how much different are they like let's let's be realistic right yeah um so i think it's it's again it's, it's sneakers have been a little genderless we had the conversation last time like nobody's focusing on like the the streetwear female consumer and that's a huge loss but mm -hmm. um how much would i say these are i don't know that i don't know this particular i'm going to say dunk lows in general uh, just let it out i'm serious I'm like whatever good. the that whatever that number is just say it i'm going to say 250 to four 250 to four resale. 400. Uh, that's correct that's a wide margin but i'll give it to her but look at it it's 290 is 400 um she, within the realm she's within the realm for sure now you nailed it you nailed it all right i just the don't get all like like the specific like i know like the the dunk lows in general and the dunk highs in general and you know unless it's got like travis scott on it or, or <laughs> right. like you know i'm like i don't know if the red's worth more than the you know Yep. Yeah, it really is like a like an old like a math class at this point where you're just like, okay, well, if if this, then this happens, and then this happens, this transitive law to this, and you get your eight hundred dollar sneaker. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know. It's all right. So the next shoe that I have here, uh, uh, classic Reebok Alien Stompers. These are the highs. Uh, these were a special release, born uh, uh, in the Alien movie, the mm -hmm. second one by Ridley herself. I'm going to say 1,200 to 2,000. Oh, you have been eyeing these, haven't you? <laughs> I, I, I haven't. Did I get close? You nailed it. Oh, the last sale was 1,200. Lowest ask is around 2,000. All right, so I'm a little low, but. Listen, I, I used to get that 1,200. have only gotten 850 so far, so you never know. Right, but <laughs> still, that's uh, that's pretty close right there. Did you, did you ever watch? Guys, like size fives get like three times as price right. as 10 and a half because nobody can get them. It's, it's a complicated business. What do you think of the shoe before we move on? You know, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan. I, <laughs> I, I, I um, with that being said, I told you, I actually bought the original um, Nike silver um, return. What is it? Um, Back to the future. Yes. That I bought them in a vintage store. Like, 30 years ago because I was all about the it. The mags you're saying, the ones that yeah. auto laced in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm definitely into nostalgia and I'm definitely into um to vintage and going into people's collection to find find their hero shoes. This is just like a I'm like, is it a boot? Is it a shoe? Like it's yeah. hard to wear, it's not it's for stomping aliens, which we have <laughs> we don't yeah, have a problem. Alien, <laughs> and it's also like, look at me, I'm um I got this shoe. I'm, I'm a cool space lady. I, you know, like, you know, but it looks like this is one of those things where like you buy something and your ass looks fat in it and nobody tells you, but it's got a brand label in. So you're like, look at my ass. Like it's so you're like, I would, I would wear the shit out of these and I would wear it. So I would tuck my jeans in <laughs> I would tuck right. a, like a cowboy uh, boot. Uh, I love that. That's, that <laughs> makes me really happy that you're like, you look at this and you go, I know exactly how I'll wear that. Yeah. I love that. Meant to be presented. Yeah, I'll be the the cowboy uh, alien fighting. <laughs> but I'm also like, remember, I'm I'm older than you guys, so I, yeah. I got you know, there's grunge in my blood. Like, mm -hmm. if, I actually recently did a podcast within my industry, and they were like, "What decade are you?" And I was like, "Oh my god, I'm totally like '90s rock, like grunge, like Chris Cornell and Pearl Jam. I'm like, put an army boot on me, and yeah. that's my power space. Like, I wear army boots, you know." Wait, what podcast is that? Because if anyone wants to listen from our end, it's go. it's in the footwear industry. It's in it's called um, shoe. Uh, I have to get you the name. It's called shoe in, and it's really just sort of the CEOs of companies like Madden or these large shoe. It's very shoe industry focused. Nice. We so do have me. I look at this and I'm like, give me like man, give me give me make this black leather with a extended bottom, and I'm down. <laughs> style thing. Chris, write that down. Write that down. <laughs> All we right. got to record it. We're good. We I'm, got, like, yeah, I'm going to kick you in the face. If I'm going to stomp in my stomping shoes, <laughs> they've got to do damage. Yeah, this that's is, right. This is just going to make a little circle on the bottom from the outside plate. 
I, I'm five foot six, so I also have a vested interest in kind of like a pump situation. So there you go. Or, or listen, I, I laughed. Like I was having a conversation with my kid about the insoles that make you look high taller. That you right. Sneakers. Like you know, you can get a solid two to three inches just from like this fake inner platform. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know but nothing about that. Easy. So it's hidden. Mm -hmm. All right. The next shoe that we got here is going to be a Yeezy Classic. It's going to be the Yeezy 350 Zebra. So uh, I think these have a lower resale than we think. And I'm going to say 250 to 200, 250 to 400. Again, Ooh, 250 to 400. I even think that's a little high. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to say 200. 200. OK, the zebras. Oh, Ooh, you were right. you were on a good streak. Yeah. All right. I'm not a easy fan, man. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I know. Sorry. I know that's really. No, bad. you know what? Because no. I'm not necessarily like a Yeezy guy either. It's just it's just funny um, to like hear what people like and don't like. Because I would have pinned you as like appreciating the, the Yeezys, but maybe not like, you know, no, all the way with them. To me, the problem with Yeezys. OK, here's what I like about Yeezys. I love that it tapped into this culture that was based on sort of skate and art um, and has evolved into, um, you know, hip hop, music, gaming, and, you know, it's, it's, it's expanded and, and tapping into the appreciation for music with, uh, with Kanye. Mm. On the flip side, I think it is such a status symbol like, I think somebody buying these VZs is like, I am a hype beast. I am cool. Embracing um, it in a, in a bad way, you're saying. Well, I, it's one of those, like, it so obviously comes from the outside. Your inner power comes from the outside and not your inside. It's a little like, dude, what the fuck? It's like your daddy. Honestly, you know what my issue with this shoe is? That everybody's daddy's buying it for them. Yup. <laughs> Father, I'm going to need you to cancel those. <laughs> Yeah, but it is. It's like, like I look at like these. Sorry, like no offense. Like I look at, I look at. It's a little like the subtlety of what you wear. Like I look at these, um, you know, sixteen or fifteen or fourteen year old kids wearing Yeezys, and I'm like, dude, that's like looking at a twenty year old driving like a convertible, you know, Aston Martin. Like, right? You hmm. know, you didn't pay for it, and so why you're feeling empowered by it, I don't get. Whereas, uh, when you look at the dunks. And the colors, like unless you're a sneaker head or have a passion for it, you don't really know if it's just a hundred and ten dollar shoe that somebody bought at Nike or if there is this resale cool value to it. Mm -hmm. And you're speaking to a specific audience, whereas I think a Yeezy speaks to um, it has a different motivation. Yeah, I feel that. Is that sorry? It just feels a little inauthentic to me. No, no. I look. We talk about. I mean, going I back to the to bootleg stand conversation. By my morals. I have to stand <laughs> by what I've said consistently. I just, I like that Yeezy said. Everybody that wants a pair of Yeezys can get a pair of Yeezys. I support that. Uh, That's true. I'm, listen, I'm down with it. I, again, I am not telling any, and I, you know, maybe it's because the first knockoff shoe I ever bought in China would be Yeezy, and my kid almost killed me with it. But I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, going back to the bootleg conversation, it is about intent. So if you feel like there's in, like the intent isn't there, then I'm with you on that. I'll support you when you say that. It, it is. It's about. It's about. Uh, 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 you know, is it about the passion for the sneaker? And that I hold tremendous admiration and appreciation for. Like if you're in it because you have a passion for the subtlety and you're speaking within a, a consumer group, you know, it's a difference between a Rolex, I'm gonna say these names and you're gonna laugh at me, and like an Audemars, it's really similar to the watch market. Like there are watches out there that scream, look at me, I have money. Right. There are watches out there that could basically look like a swatch unless you are within the watch fandom. And I, I tend to, as a consumer, I have a, more of an appreciation for, it looks like a swatch unless you know better. Right, no, I'm with you on that. And yeah, like, that's kind of like, in the comedy world, that would be the comics comic. Like the comedian that makes the comedians laugh, it's like that kind of like, I, like, I know who you are. Nobody else knows who you are, but I do. I'm a little like, I don't, I don't need to scream money power unless I want to. And if I do it, I want to scream it to people who are subtle about it. Or if the song comes on, then I'm screaming that too. <laughs> <laughs> All 
the next shoe that I have here, I don't know if you saw that, um, is the <laughs> uh, is the New Balance 992. I, I believe it's pronounced j j <laughs> The Jound, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, the Jound 992s. No idea. Uh... This one's a tricky one. Farrell, because this is this is uh, a weird phenomenon that happened within like remember like how dad core became like a thing yeah, for a little while say, like new balance and fila just sort of you know was recreated rebirth yes um, this is like a hyper concentrated version of that where like a dad blog became like sort of like a uh a brand well, it became like again. It's it's that crossover between athletic and luxury. Like this consumer group, I and mean, this is a luxury focused consumer group. Mm -hmm. That yes. like, that's what actually is so interesting to me. Like is like the the combination between adolescent and 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 luxury is you know. Listen, I'm 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 old as shit, man. I want to see some kid like slinging pizza to buy his shoes. Just the way I, you know. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say 400. Ooh. And that's high, in my opinion. Ooh, no. Fuck. 790 to 625. <laughs> I'm totally off my radar. I, I gave you, listen, this one was a trick one. I gave you this one because right. you I, you would assume it's a new balance. It wasn't going to work out. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Way. You're good. Then I have to plug it in. I've got electronic issues, kids. Whatever. We're cool. All right. Great. Here. Nice. Can you see me all right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think this is the last one, right? I got one more. That's it. Okay. Maybe I don't know New Balance because it's not on my kids' radar. Right. This is it's the a, last it's one. A weird, it's a weird hype shoe. What, what I was trying to get by. Like, is there, like, there's people who only, like, fuck with the dad shit, and yeah. they, like, get really into looking like hype dads at 20. And these are called the – these are the Jordan 1 origin stories. These otherwise known as, like, the – Jordan one Spider Man's from the most recent movie. The I'm gonna cartoon. say nine, six, seven, See, seven to nine. This one, this one, you know, because <laughs> this one is right around there. Yeah, it's gonna be. So the last sale was eight hundred, around six hundred lowest ask, seven seventy five highest ask, highest bid. But you know, that's around after taxes and everything. That's like nine hundred. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's nine. I get. I'm. I'm in on this. I. I actually think most of the the the. Highs are anywhere between like, you know, six and nine, and then it gets into the subtleties of, oh, this is, you know, UNC. Oh, this is UNC with off white. Oh, this. Is <laughs> yeah, sh whatever. you got the marketplace down. Like, yeah. The striations are just like, I'm like, oh. The names and the labels make it all. Yep. 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 You got it. Uh, that's all the shoes for today. That's right. three out of five. Pretty strong showing. Listen, that's better than most of our guests at this point. Oh, I don't believe that. But... <laughs> no, we get some real dummies to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Not you. Other comedians that like have an album coming out. Cough, cough. <laughs> but you know, it's like I'm like I'm all about consumer behavior. Like I'm all about, um, I'm, you know, in this particular case, I'm less knowledgeable about the market, about, about the product because, and I hate to say it this way, I've kind of grown out of it a little bit. Right. Oh, um, so you th there is a there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You do man, get out. I, of some I have actually. I think I said this to you last time. Like my first moment of empowerment by footwear was over the Adidas, um, you know, uh, high top. I used to call them my fresh white on whites. Like I grew up in New York City, and I bought these. Um, what are they were called? They just had a. They just remade them again. Um, the forums. The forums. And. I, it was 1984, like I'm that old. It was 1984, I was in high school yeah. and I went out and bought a pair and uh, it was one of the biggest arguments I ever had with my father. He was like, are you out of your mind? Like <laughs> 110 bucks on sneakers. And uh, I was like, you know what, now I fit in, they're awesome. And I was so proud kicking around my, my fresh wine on whites. Like I thought I was like, City cool. So I really relate to um, sneakers and shit making you feel powerful and cool. Hell yeah. Yeah. But I'm also like, I'm also into consumer behavior. Like, I just find it fascinating. If I didn't make shoes, I'd probably just study the human mind because it's cool. It is, it is a fun case study to like watch how, like, we're told what hype is. I guess that's like the, com the consumerism you're talking about, especially when you need to see like, a shoe on StockX go up $400 because Travis Scott was a, a, taking a photo in them. 
mm-hmm. right? Or he's you got know? his name on him. Like, yeah, and, right. And I gotta say, I I get it. Like when you think about who the influencers are in today's world, they're pretty diverse. And then you think about um, who the aspirational people and world is to this consumer group, and it is Travis Scott, and it is. You know, and it's so different from the implications of Virgil engaging with the Nike customer versus Travis versus Kanye. Like it's just a di- like they're 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 different but the same. It's yeah, really cool. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. Like think it about really what cool. models like think about what Gigi Hadid and then has done for the uh, streetwear market just by being casual when she walks out of a photo shoot and sort of sporting streetwear and all of a sudden women are like, oh, I want to be, or young girls are like, I want to be her. Whereas it, historically it was like Missy Elliott and, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Big facts. Well, Farrell, I got to tell you, you have been an amazing guest. Um, yes. You had full doubts, but I'm telling you, you just <laughs> crushed it. <laughs> you um, crushed it. You crushed it. You made me feel real silly about some of the things that I complain about in Sneaker World. <laughs> Thank you. If you ever, if you guys ever want a real understanding, let me know. If you ever want to talk to anybody in the Sneaker World, I know this is, you know, let me know. It's um, some of the coolest tech and information. Like when you think about, um, engaging with consumers like i was i was actually on a and you can listen to it i was listening to a podcast with another one of my industry peers who's the ceo of a really large skate actually athletic brand and he was talking about how they use um diy or customization like which is such an important piece of your market as well yes the, the customization of these shoes and how um, women went out and they were customizing their sneakers with a butterfly print and the AI from that customization told them to actually make a sneaker with a butterfly print. Like they are right. using mm-hmm. all of the information that we share with them and capitalizing on it. And it's kind of cool. Like it's just, it's, we are living in a new world. Yeah, Fast. they are listening. They they are listening to us. They, Ben, you, I, and I said this to you last time. Like, I'm waiting for the day my kids look me in the face and are like, you know what? I appreciate you think you're smarter than me and you want to tell me what to do. But, you know, again, two depressions. Our, you know, our farce are burning down. Uh, we're having, you know political unrest in our white house the world has never been more divided and we have a pandemic so with all due respect mom you guys totally fucked this up (laughs) and i'm not going to listen to a word you say and i'm just going to create my own reality and honestly gen z like should yeah yeah did we screwed it all up like no offense but we, we we screwed up the world I should oh, get yeah. you to talk to my mom. She doesn't believe me when I tell her this shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I'm waiting for my kids to say it to me. I just don't like it when they do. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're like, don't tell me. I'm like, listen, punk. Like, I know shit. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely do. And you said all that stuff today. Um, if you could, what would you like to say as the final outro here? Like, you follow on Instagram, like where can people yeah. find you or where do you want to direct people to go to your stuff? So my Instagram is Farrell Robin, F-A-R-Y-L. I just spent my name right, right? F-A-R-Y-L-R-O-B-I-N. <laughs> and it's really what we talk about most using Instagram is um, is really the product that we're doing with our label in inclusive sizes all the way up to a women's size 16, which is equivalent to a men's size 14. And then you'll see some random shots of what we do for other companies. And we're really about empowerment. You'll see some, some stories about what it's like to be a female entrepreneur or every once in a while, I'll give a timeline like 32 when I started my company, 41 when I should have shut it down because I lost all my money. You know? <laughs> yep. When I made my first million <clears throat> pairs of shoes and you know, 52 when we broke double digit millions. Like, so it's just inspiration into entrepreneurial thinking and stuff like that. But uh, it's, it's one Brian for the most part. And you know, LinkedIn, if anybody has any, I, I know this is a younger consumer group, but if anybody has any questions about the industry or wants a connection or wants support or help, I'm down with it. If anybody uh, needs mentorship or support or just has questions like, hey, I'm having this podcast and talk to me about a pricing structure, like reach out. I am all about sharing what I've learned. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. 
That's yeah. perfect. Anytime. And thank you. you. Rock, thank you for even considering me. You just like lifted my cred by maybe half a point with my kids. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's up.